Welcome to the Power of Lifting podcast. I'm Eric Cafferty, owner of the Mecca Gym. I am a strength and conditioning coach and a contest prep specialist. The focus of this functions. Perfect. This Let's is my daughter. This is Peyton. She's the TikTok star. I go, Dad. <laughs> All right, let's back it up. I'm just Uncle so Tom. proud to start you. So is that proud. all I yeah, am to you? That's, yeah, I'm like, Uncle father. Tom does not know what TikTok is. <laughs> let's <laughs> let's back it up. Um, so yes. there's a lot more to me than I would say what social media sees. But um, my thing is when I started posting about mm. fitness, about yeah my journey and whatever. I was just posting to document it for myself. Right. I wasn't necessarily posting to have a following. That kind of just came with it, which it's just crazy. It's kind of just blown up overnight. So, so tell us a little bit about like the, the, the day to day, like what, um, like what have you been doing for work? What like, um, what are, and then what are some of your crowning achievements? Okay. Um, So actually, I just recently switched to doing social media full time. Oh, fantastic. So I completely just make a living doing content. So what did you do prior to doing social media? Okay. So basically, I would say finding a direction in my life in general. So let's start out with how old are you? I'm 23. She's 23. 23. Okay. Great age. Yes. Nobody likes you when you're 23. <laughs> <laughs> According to Blink-182. Oh, my gosh. Uh, but that's before her time. That's before her time. Do you no, know Blink-182? I know Blink-182. I was going to say she has to have that song. She has to have that song. Okay. So, that's on my gym playlist for sure. Oh, good for you. Excellent. <laughs> good. Yeah. Um, so I never really had my thing growing up. Um, I always felt like I was meant to do something, but I didn't know what it was. Mm-hmm. I had absolutely no direction like I was always jealous of the kids that were super into like soccer or Uh, basketball or they had their thing or whatever it was and I was like I'm just not passionate about anything and I was just waiting to find my thing and then once I found fitness and bodybuilding I was like this is it you know the one it was just a come to Jesus moment for me which sounds so cliche yeah but I was like this is what I was meant to do so up until that point, I was just kind of working jobs that I wasn't okay. really passionate about. You know, I worked at Dutch Bros forever. Gosh, I You were passionate I, working at Dutch Bros? Those guys are <laughs> insane. You know, we really they, seem like we are. Right. Um, I worked at an eye doctor. I was not qualified at all. I don't know how <laughs> they let me work there, but I was working as an eye doctor assistant for a while. Wow. Oh, doing fantastic. like the nine to five stuff that... It just wasn't for me. I was you, like, you this made, is not... You made money, but you weren't into it. Yeah. Right. And I was kind of like, I... All right, I found what I love to do, which is fitness, bodybuilding, and I'm going to find a way to make money for it. Fair enough. So, yeah. So that was the choice. So when when was it... Sorry, I could have missed it. Mm-hmm. That you were that you found the fitness and the bodybuilding. What age were you? Where were so, you? So, it's crazy. I actually haven't been lifting consistently for a very long time at all like my first time I was like all right I'm taking this seriously it was April 1st 2021 I don't know why I remember so specifically damn girl yeah that's not very long yeah so that was (laughs) actually the first day that I ever tracked a meal was April 1st 2021 great April Fool's day yeah I was like this is it and something just like clicked in me I was like I'm going to do it and I'm going to do it to the best of my ability. And then ever since then, I just haven't looked back. Yeah. It's crazy. That's fantastic. Yeah. 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 So, so did you grow up playing sports? I was a gymnast and a cheerleader like growing up. Um, but nothing too competitively. I kind of got out of it in high school. Mm -hmm. So yeah. But you, you do post pretty frequently about how like your family likes to stay in shape and, I (laughs) I totally know your dad from legitimately 20 years ago. He, everyone knows him. They'll be like, I saw your dad running down Eagle Road. I'm like, yep. Like I didn't like know him, but when I saw at your competition and I'm like, oh my gosh, that's your dad. Like I totally know that guy from the gym like Mm. 20 years ago. No joke. (laughs) And I'm like, oh my gosh, I feel extremely old. Oh my gosh. I am coaching this guy's daughter. Yeah, right. I like... (laughs) 
Like, I spotted this man I, 20 I, years I ago. I knew this man like when she was just a thought. Yeah. <laughs> like, <this laughs> crazy. Is, oh my gosh. Yeah. Okay. The way the world is. I man. definitely got my, I mean, the gym has always been like, I was, you know, this big and my parents were going to the gym. It's always yeah. been in my life. It's never been like a foreign thought to right. me. And then my mom also did a couple shows like oh, cool. when she, when cool. I was probably like, four or five. Oh, okay. So the idea of competing, yeah. the idea of bodybuilding in general hasn't ever been a foreign So concept. did you lift in high school at all? I mean, you know, nothing yeah, too no. crazy. The Instagram workouts, like the I P, wasn't. The class. PE classes, yeah. did you yeah. take lifting in high school? Oh yeah, I did. Oh yeah, fantastic. <laughs> so where'd you go to high school? Mountain View. Oh, very oh, good. Okay. Mm -hmm. She's a local gal. I Just am. local gal. I yeah. am. Terrible school, local gal. No, I'm just yeah. kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Did you go? Yeah. I went to Centennial. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. Well, I graduated from Bora. And then you went so. to Bora. Yeah. Oh. All locals are Look here. at that's us. Good. Yeah. All, yeah, go us for locals. So, <laughs> go us. Um, so you did your first competition in what, August of 2021? So yeah. like not even six months after you started training. Yeah. Which, which is crazy, which is, is kind crazy. of a testament yeah, to like how I approach things in my life. It's like. Head on. It's like, all right, I'm not just going <laughs> to start going on. to the gym. I'm, I'm going to be a bodybuilder. <laughs> like, I'm, gonna, you know? I'm doing a show. I'm like, getting on the stage. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So, That's which wild. probably isn't in hindsight how I should have done it. Well, yeah. I remember when you uh, approached me about it, I was like, oh my gosh, like this, like, I, I mean, it was very apparent that like the potential was there, but I was like, okay, well, this is happening. I'll, yeah. Yep. We'll, we'll help you through this, but right. this is going to be, yeah, this is, We'll, we'll see what we can do kind of a situation. Yeah. You know uh -huh. what I mean? Yeah. Which Did your was... mom influence this at all? Because she had competed before? Honestly, um, when I told her I was thinking about doing it, mm -hmm. she almost kind of, it was the opposite. Like, my parents never pushed me to do anything. It was always, if you come to us, we will support you. Sure. Um, they always wanted it to be 100% from me. So I think that she was like, once I started doing it yeah then she was super then excited about it yeah. um she didn't want to push me yeah. one way or the That's other cool. well so. when we had casey on last week eric had the same when they were talking about casey doing it again mm -hmm. it was kind of the same thing it's like this cannot come from me at all yeah because you probably recognize if you're really yeah. going to do it it's going to be hard and you got to do oh, it for yeah. yourself you have to that's cool you have to want it more right. than no one's going to want it for you right so. oh, wow isn't that the truth ain't that the truth <laughs> ain't that the truth Ain't that the truth? Welcome to Truth and Transparency. Ain't that the truth? Again, welcome to Truth and Transparency. You guys are in for um, a complete, I think uh, things are going to come full circle for a lot of people that have been following this channel, following where we've kind of been heading in terms of the uh, history of this house, the history of the neighborhood, the people, you know, um, how is this house passed around, uh, things like that. Um, going to have you take a look right here. Um, just going to back us up right about, all right. This is an OnlyFans page, guys. Um, in case you guys don't know, but this is what OnlyFans is. Okay. Uh, Peyton, uh, is an influencer. She lived, um, she listed both addresses, 1122 King Road and 1112 King Road as her address um, at different times. So, um, <clears throat> Lana, can we start snacking now? Yep, grab the popcorn. Bell, get the popcorn going. Absolutely. Doctor Latina, eat those snacks, girl. Or get on the cardio machine, lift some weights or something. Um, so, uh, Peyton here, uh, she basically says that, you know, uh, the gym lifting weights, it completely changed her life. She went from being a frat rat to a gym rat. Those are her words, not mine, but I like it. Um, something happened in her life where she needed to make a change. Um, kind of like Michael Jackson, you know, I think it's man in the mirror. <clears throat> so here next up for those of you guys that don't know this is the 1122 king road house right there um forever that is 
right there. It was sold in 2018. It was sold. And then, so a new management team took over this house and right there, it is a glass door that's in that house. It's sold in 2018. Now, everyone's going to say, well, when was that door removed? Because that's not the door that we see now. You're correct. It's not. The house that's right next to it, 112, or I'm sorry, 1112 King Road. Um, did you guys know that was built in 2019? Not sure if you guys know that. In 2019, the house with the light bulb um, camera built in 2019, okay? In 2019, to rent out the property, they had a camera cr crew co go through the 1112 house and take pictures, okay? Um, the pictures were taken to obviously lease out the property, 1112 has six bedrooms, three baths. Okay. Yes. The 1112 has the water. Yeah. They were throwing it as they were walking out the door. Um, I believe. Yes. Um, so six bedrooms, three baths, and Peyton lived at that property uh, in 2020. Okay. Uh, for sure. With, um, you know, a handful of gals. Uh, them being one of them being M Maya uh, Happenstall. She was the one that was on Dateline when she was saying, um, uh, what was it? She was saying uh, that she had called Kaylee three or four times, that she had texted Kaylee in the morning, and that Kaylee wasn't answering. Okay. Um, so Peyton was, they were roommates, and there was another girl. Um, McConklin or McConkley or whatever. Um, and then obviously some other girls because it was a six bedroom place, but that was built in 2019. The pictures that were taken inside of that home to rent it out. If you actually look at things that, you know, people don't choose to look at, you'd be able to see that that's how I was able to find this door. And we're going to get to that when it comes down. But right here. Uh, what about anything? And I was just the garage. Where is it? Right there. The garage that was there. And then in when it was bought in 2018, um, they went ahead and put in for a permit to wreck that garage. And I'm thinking, why would you ever want to wreck? this garage, but they did. So that garage, um, was there, obviously it's not anymore. And it was designed to be leveled down for the purpose of parking. Okay. Maybe too many people were having fights over the garage. You know, your roommates are like, Oh, I get the garage. No, you get the garage. No, I get the garage. I don't know. At the end of the day though, that garage was leveled, um, after the, after 2018, now right here this picture is taken from the inside of the 1112 house and i happened to look at all the different pictures on uh zillow and i was like holy shit look at this perfect view of this from this um kitchen window and it'll back out this kitchen window has a perfect view of the backyard of 1122. That's your view. Okay. Um, that's what that's from. As well as when I was looking through the other window, I said, hot damn. Um, that's a little bit backed out. Okay. Uh, something I want to point out here is right over here to the right, nobody really talks about it, but I want to point it out. Do you see how the white all the way to the right of the house, you see how you have the white little, like, um, like it's a halvesy to stick out. So like technically you could be uh, hiding behind that, but it's, uh, just a half, half wall. Um, people don't, haven't been talking about that much. 
We're going to talk about it here a little bit later, but take a look right there um, at the right side of the picture that you're looking at there. Um, you're going to have that little white half wall. Okay. Um, now we're going to go to the next photo here. Privacy wall. There you go. All right, here we go. Now, this is a photo of <clears throat> Peyton with, um, to the right, there is a blonde girl. And she says, you know, besties looking out and she's getting shots for the whole group. Well, right there, an older gentleman. Um, don't know who he is, but what I can tell you is, is he is what she would call a sugar daddy. She hashtags on this post, hashtag sugar dad. Um, and at first, when you go to look at it, all you can see is Suge, as in Suge Knight. No, I'm kidding. But just Suge. Uh, and then I said, oh, shit, let me click the, you know, see more. Um, and then you see sugar dad. Refers to him as sugar daddy. He puts her hand, this guy right here sugar daddy takes his hand and, you know, is massaging and rubbing and caressing the blonde girl. Um, you guys can check that all out on the public, uh, channel of Peyton. Um, again, this is a post that's who's more, who's more likely to do drugs. And what you do is you take the camera and you take it from like your face to somebody's else and their face and you go back and forth and then like, it's like a, you know, they pick a winner. Well, she just kept it on her face when she moved it back. Um, and these are her days in Moscow, Idaho. Now, this is how it all correlates here is warning. You have committed more violations of our terms of service. Your account was, um, it was flagged. And these are the following reasons. Scammer, phishing attempt. Please contact our customer service, our customer support team to see if your account is eligible to be you know, restored. Um, again, this is public on a TikTok channel. And this is from what you would call, um, I don't know if you guys know TikTok. This is from TikTok, but it is of her showing, hey, are all of you guys having problems like me and getting your, um, it's a, a seeker channel. Uh, what's it called again? Seeking arrangements. Seeking arrangements. That's it. I thought it was edible arrangements, you know, <laughs> seeking arrangements. I learned something new. Go ahead and type in www.seekingarrangements.com. Um, we'll go ahead and do all that a little bit later. But seeking arrangements is a dating site where you can look for sugar daddies. You can be a sugar baby, whatever you want to call yourself. But her account was flagged, okay? For, again, you have committed more violations. It wasn't like, oh, you committed your first violation. No, you've committed more, you know, violations. And it's for scamming, you know, um, catfishing. I, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, is that what phishing is? I don't know. Uh, yes. Seeking arrangements. Yep. Look it up. You'll, uh, you can take yourself right down that path. Um, and this was the lifestyle. Okay. Allegedly, you know, before the whole, I was saved by the gym. I was saved by, um, a new part of, uh, like my life, meaning hers, it went on a completely different path. Okay. The guy asked her specifically, what did you do before, you know, this whole working out thing? What was your job? Like, where, you know, tell us about yourself. She couldn't answer that question in the beginning. Um, and she states that, you know, well, everybody graduates high school, but she never talked about, you know, did she graduate college or not? But she did go to the University of Idaho. She was in the, the sorority lifestyle and she had met all of these girls all of the victims, um, Zana, she knew Maddie, she knew all these girls. Um, and we're going to get to that. <clears throat> uh, 
Um, again, this is her comparing her life of when she was, you know, working out to, hey, I used to be a, a frat rat, as she calls herself, a frat rat, to now I'm a gym rat. Um, <clears throat> I was paying attention to, in the background, cabinets. Um, I was paying attention to flooring. I'm paying attention to, you know, fencing, if, if, if it's outside. Um, looking at all the different details to see where things were located. Uh, Peyton here worked at Dutch, the Dutch Brothers Coffee, all right? The same thing that Kaylee did. Kaylee was on the path of, she worked at Dutch Brothers. Peyton, she did the same thing. She worked, she's from Boise, okay? She worked at the Boise one. And then when she, you know, uh, she transferred her employment over to um, a different location, which we know that that's in Moscow. Right here, um, September 18th, 2019. This is, you guessed it, this is the house that's 1112, okay? Uh, the house that's next door to um, the crime scene. This is Peyton taking a picture with none other than Ruby Simpson. We all know Ruby Simpson um, lived with Maddie um, at the 1122 King Road house the year before. Uh, when Maddie was a junior, Ruby Simpson was a senior. And this is the 1112 house. This is where Peyton uh, lived, but she also had her address listed as 1122 at one point. Um, we'll get all, we'll get all into that, but that's where these steps are. Uh, Peyton says, you know, in this house, uh, on Saturdays, like it's Vandal games, uh, about the football team right there in this house, we appreciate Vandal Saturdays. Now, this is a picture of 1122 King Road, um, the downstairs, the two bedrooms on the first floor. This is those built-in closets before it was all um, restored. <clears throat> Again, I pay attention to the backgrounds of picture taking. We're going to get into all of that. Again, there I, I did it for date reasons, November 8th, 2020, okay? In her podcast that she did with these guys, she said that the first day that she ever started tracking her food intake to, like, write down whatever she's eating, her calories, she started doing that on 4-1-2020, okay? So on 4-1-2020, she started um, tracking her, her food intake. Um, her birthday is in March. So it's just like, kind of like anything, like after like a holiday, you say, okay, I'm going to go and start working out, blah, blah, blah. So she started tracking her food intake on, um, April 1st, 2020 before this picture was taken. <clears throat> we'll get into why this is important. Now, 2018, when this was bought, I zoomed in here to show you guys the back of 1122. It had all of trees. It was loaded. These trees are right up on top of the house, the 1122 King Road house. So that backyard that you see that's all, you know, leveled down and um, you got the patio that wasn't there, okay? This was all um, leveled down in the back to these trees here, yanked out, um, made it way more open. Same thing with the houses behind it. Like, you're taking the, you know, uh, the privacy away, more or less, because, I mean, clearly when you look out, everything to the back, this is what you're looking at. So in case you guys did not know that, the, the back of 1122, you want to talk about somebody hiding in the woods, 
that house would have been way more like um, you could have actually parked in that back, back parking lot, been in those those woods or whatever, and actually been like hidden um, because this was all leveled. None of this was here before. I mean, I'm sorry, this was here before, but at the time of the crime, none of this was like this. But this was like this in 2018. <clears throat> And there, I just back it off a little bit so you guys could see. Um, there we go. And you can see how all of the trees, the forest, whatever you want to call it, it's all up on it. It's all up on that house. Um, so I hope you guys get to see what I mean by none of that is there now. Why? Because it was all leveled out. right there, you can see the door. Okay. Nobody goes and just replaces a door. So, um, that door was like that until a point in time when it became no longer that door. And it was the door that you guys see now. Um, and we're going to get into when that happened in the summer of 2019. Now, this was taken, again, from the, if you go to Zillow, you can go to the house, the 1112. I zoomed in from the, the picture uh, that was taken inside this 1112 house. I zoomed in through the window. So this is where this is coming from. I zoomed in because I was paying attention to all the cords, the cords that were running along this house back. Again, this is... This is taken in 2019, this picture. 2019, right after 2018, um, I was looking at these cords and I noticed what I believed to be possibly a camera, some type of structure. Uh, I went ahead and noted it. <clears throat> That's what that is. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you guys, um, we're going to look at when this house was bought and it got with a new management team in 2018. I want to show you guys something. Um, let's go like this. I'm going to bring you guys backstage to my um, my haven here. So here we go. Again, hope you guys are having a great night. I'm happy to have you guys all here with me, with the mods. All right, so here we go. Hashtag sugar dad. Okay, there he is. When your girl is securing shots for the whole damn crew. That's what I say. 12-20-2021. The hashtag Sugar dad, go best friend, get a girl, all right? And then, like I said, homie here rubs her, um, rubs her down on her back, okay? Um, right here. From frat rat to gym rat. Okay, uh, this was Peyton, okay, here. She's kicking it with her... Um, her homies here and um, doing a beer bong. And uh, let's see. Again, who's more likely to do drugs? You're supposed to pass the thing back and forth. 4 4 2020. Again, this is right before this. Um, well, I should say, right as she's starting to clock her. I'm going to start keeping track of what I eat and drink. Okay. 4 4 2020. 4 4 2020. Get it? 4 20, 4 20. You guys paying attention yet? You guys getting it yet? 
You guys getting it yet? Come on now. Um, can't get numbers and dates past me. 420, 420. That's a double 420. 420. Get it? <laughs> Welcome to Truth and Transparency. Um, again, guys, look at how close those trees all up on that back yard. Look at there's a fence right there, okay? That fence was torn down. All those trees were torn down. If you don't believe me, go check out the permits. If you don't believe me. Okay. I was paying attention to the, again, like I said, paying attention to all the different type of doors. Okay, take a look at this type of doors. What is that? That, that door looks like a what? It's like a, oh, wait. Doesn't that look like a, um, what do you call it? A pantry that you go and you, you open it and you get something out of there. That pantry right there. See right here? Pantry. Oh, yes. It's yeah. A pantry. Okay. Just, just take a look here. So take a look at that pantry 2020. Okay. We'll get to it later. We'll come back to that one. Again, here is where my sugar baby's at. Okay. Where my sugar baby's at. This is a seeking arrangements. This is what I was talking about. Okay. Seeking.com FAQ. Check it out. All right. <clears throat> now let's take a look. Okay, I'm going to share some more with you. All right. Let's go ahead and get... um. I want to show here. Um, gonna go with a Stella, Stella kind of night. Stella, 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 Stella. Okay. Um, let's see here. <laughs> um, Go like this. Okay, yeah. All right. <clears throat> Take a look. Right there. Delta. Delta. 2019, okay? November 2019. Okay. Again, Ruby Simpson with blonde hair. That's Peyton. And that's a different Peyton. So you got Peyton, Peyton, Ruby. Um, this is, again, the Dutch Brothers coffee. Okay, like all these girls are just walking, talking. Um, it was like Kaylee was, you know, kind of doing like the same thing that this girl was. Or so it looked. Now we get to the good stuff. Here we go. This is the moment that you guys have been waiting for. All right. So follow me along here while I show you guys how this works. As you can see, in January, so what, you, what they do is I've been telling people this for a long time. This house rented out as a house. There was no, you can rent this room, you can rent that room, what room would you like, and that you're roommates with strangers. No, 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 no. This house rented out as a complete unit, one unit, okay? And when it would go on the market would be in the early uh, winter between January and February. Uh, a lot of landlords will come to you and they'll say,
landlords will come to you and they'll say, um, hey, do you plan on renewing your, yep, cheers, look at that, Stella. Do you plan on renewing your, um, your lease? Because otherwise we're going to be putting it up because everything renews um, in the, um, in, in August. So, but we ask you in, in the winter time, hey, are you planning on living here again? Because we're going to get you to sign and renew between January to like, you know, March. Otherwise, we go ahead and we put it on the market, okay, to be rented out for that next, you know, and it's from August to August. So what you have a lot of kids doing is they will start subletting in right after graduation in May, okay? So whether or not you stay at that house or not, you're responsible for paying the rent. So let's take a look here. In uh, January 27, 2017, it was listed for rent $21.75, okay? The reason that the it was removed from the listing in April of 18, 2017 is because, yep, you guessed it, somebody came rented it. Then um, it goes back on the market for rent, uh, 315, 2019. Why? Because the people that were living there were like, we're not renewing because we're what? Probably graduating or whatever the reason would be. So it goes on the market in March and it was removed. Okay. Just 15 days. I mean, this is hot commodity here. People are waiting to get into this, you know, these homes over here because it's Partyville central. Um, so boom, you had 15, 20 days here on the market to be rented. It was snagged up. So the listing was removed $2,400. All right. Um, and so you have people that are getting ready to move in then in the, you know, in August of 2019, which would be the year of the same other property, the, the one, 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 two property. It was just being built. It was built in 2019. Okay. And so it was then going to be up for rent the same like this at the same time. And you know what we did as friends? Hey, where are you moving? Let's move like, oh, there's a, there's a house that's for sale or for rent right next to it. Like we'll get that one. We'll have four people there. We'll have those four people there. And it's like, you know, all of our friends from like the dorms and whatever. Now we're just taking our party down to a different street on campus. Um, and that's what happened with those two houses. One, 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 two and one, one, Two, two king. It was like that type of arrangement. So here we come, but boom, hold on, Lana. Why is this? Holy shit. Wait, why is the house being rented out? Wait, take a look. 7 28, 2019. Oh shit, what happened? What happened that the people that said that they were basically going to move into 1122? Why would this be going back up on the market all the way at the end of July? What happened? Well, let me tell you what happened, guys. There was a huge fucking blow up. There's a big old fight, <laughs> big old blow up to the point that these people were like, um, you're getting kicked out. You're getting kicked out. What do we get kicked out for? What happened? Well, you can get kicked out for a lot of reasons. You can get kicked out for, I don't know. Um, they said, what is Bella making dinner for us? No, she's making, uh, she's making foil bowls. Just kidding. <laughs> okay. So there's, there's people supposed to move in. All right. And you could say, oh, a big fight happened. Or were they like, oh my God, no, we want to move into one, 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 two, instead of, one, one, two, two. <clears throat> this gets good. In the summer of 2019, um, I'll be, I'll, I'll start releasing uh, reports and stuff like that. But basically the owner of one, one, two, two got totally screwed over. All right. And he has to then put up his property. All right for, you know, rent again. 
and how I realized that this involved this girl Peyton is because she had 1122 as an address, but I never noticed that she like never kind of lived there though. Like I, I'm looking for pictures. I'm like, okay, what's up? Well, here she's moving into the 1112 house. Um, so here she's supposed to move into 1122, but doesn't, moves into 1112. We'll find out. So here you go. The owner of the property, or actually the property manager, they have to put it back on the market. 728, 2019, it goes back on the market. Then they're like, shit, we got to drop the price maybe a little bit because we're not going to sit on this property for a whole damn year because what, what happens here is you have all these students that are already all in leases because they did all of their leases, you know, in the winter, just like everybody else. Like that's what's normal. So you're going to have to appeal to people, um, you know, somehow and look at what they have to do. They have to take this all the way down. Look at this all the way down to 1,995 when it should be going for right around 24, 2,500 bucks a month, um, a month. Okay. All look at this. 728, 801, 817. That's about the time that school is starting. 827, 1995. And then finally, they're able to remove the listing on, um, and by September 8th, because somebody pounced on that deal, right? Right. Then <clears throat> now here we go. We're coming into that um, that winter time, and we're going to be putting the the house back on the market. And check this out, guys. You can't make this shit up. It goes on the market uh, February fifth, twenty twenty, twenty four ninety five. Right. It gets removed. Just like I said, it, it basically sends it on the, on the market for like two weeks each, each time it's ever going to happen. And that's exactly what happens here. And it gets removed. It was never listed back on the market after 2020 to be like, there's no history of it. So from 2020 all the way until present day with Kaylee and Maddie, Santa, Dylan, Bethany. Did they ever sign um, leases? Or were they always, or were, or was everybody from the point of 2020 just subletting? Because this never goes back on the market to be rented out again. And this goes actually with what Dave was talking to me about. Where it's getting, well, we gave it to the girls and then the girls had it and then we had it back and then the girls took it back. And what I mean by that is sublet it from me, sublet it from me. And you can then, you know, you can then live there and it makes it seem like I'm still living there. The owner still thinks I'm living there, but I'm subletting it to you. Okay. Um, and so much so that I went ahead and I looked up uh, Peyton and I was like, why is this girl still listed as the, as a resident of one, 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 two. Why would she be still listed as a resident? Like to this day as like the resident. Well, if the same thing that Ruby Simpson did with Dylan. Dylan Mortensen paid Ruby Simpson's mom through Venmo. Here, here is the, um, the deposit. I'm paying you the deposit. Why would Dylan Mortensen pay Ruby Simpson the deposit money? You would just go and, you know, if you're, if you're doing it, and you're all getting on a lease, okay? Um, but that's not what was happening here. What was happening here is that there was no lease signing. So, and yes, this was a COVID year, 100%. We'll get into that. Um, 
but these people weren't signing leases. They were subletting. Everybody from 2020, there was no, they never put this back on the market because it was being, it was being run out. Uh, maybe Ruby owns it. She de definitely does not own it. I promise you that. <laughs> no. Uh, bottom line is, is that beginning in 2020, um, and that's what I think was happening over there at the other property, 1112, is you have just people subletting because guess what? They, as college kids, you don't want to pay those months that you're not there. Oh, you can move into my property. Um, I'm leaving after graduation. So you can move in, you know, in May or in June. Um, and that's hence why, you know, Kaylee moved in in June um, into that property um, because one of the girls, whoever had that upstairs bedroom, uh, you know, moved out. Sure. Yep. You can move in. So she's taking that spot. Um, <clears throat> so all these girls in this house, in this specific house, one, one, two, two, um, I would love to know and love to see if any of these girls signed a lease. Because there's no record of the house being re-rented out after 2020. The house would be put up. Um, and this goes with what Dave was saying, that the house was being passed back and forth. Um, from like, it was guys were living in it one year. And then, you know, then we gave it back to the girls and shit like that. <clears throat> but I'm curious if um, the reason that no one's ever been talking about who's that sixth roommate on the lease. Well, who's all the roommates on the lease? Who, like, you know, who's uh, all the roommates on the lease? Um So cheers to everybody that's here. Um, I'm going to go back and touch on some other things, but uh, that door was replaced uh, not because it was an old door. That door was new. It was replaced during the 2019 to uh, 2020 um, year. You guys can only can imagine why the back was flattened. Um, all those woods was taken out. One second there. Sorry, I was just, um, I was calling the fire department to make sure that they came over and sprayed me with um, a hose. Um, just kidding. So let's go back over this, guys. Yep, I, I, I knew that I was on mute. Thank you. Um, I'm going to show you guys something else. see here um
Got it. Hold on. Here we go. Sorry, I was looking for something specific. <laughs> uh, all right. That is what the downstairs kitchen, I mean, kitchen, the, um, the first level floor uh, with the uh, washer dryer. This is what that room looked like, by the way. All right. I wanted to show you guys that. And uh, we'll get into that. Um, so remember how Kendra lived with uh, Maddie? Well, Kendra and Peyton are like best friends. Okay. Um, you know, Maddie's like in all of, you know, Peyton's posts. So is, uh, what's his name? Jake. Remember, Maddie lived in Boise her senior, like going into her senior year summer. So she was in Boise with all these girls where Peyton was, where Kendra was, okay? All these girls were in Boise that summer, all right? There's a sugar daddy thing again. Hold on. I want to show one last one last thing here because, um, you know, Peyton's an influencer. She is on TikTok every single day pumping out her stuff. God bless her. Um, something in her life totally changed after February of 2020. And um, if you go look at their TikToks, if you go way back in the day and you look at what they're posting, I mean, they're just drunk, hot messes falling all over. And like I said, she calls herself a frat rat and goes to a, um, a gym rat. But guys, something that we've been looking for this whole time is – this, you know, when you're a freshman and a sophomore and you got your, you know, your seniors in college and you're hanging out with them and you're seeing what they're doing and the things are like, well, here, um, oh my God, I do this sugar daddy stuff. Like I hang out with these older dudes and they pay for all of our stuff. Um, I'm going all of these places. I'm going all of these different countries. I went and looked at Peyton's, you know, where she was going all over, you know, traveling and stuff like that. But she has her um, OnlyFans. She has her sugar daddy shit. This was the activity. This is what she was doing. Okay. Remember when they couldn't, she couldn't answer the question on how, like, where you're working at and what you're doing? Well, she was working at the same place that Kaylee was. She was doing the coffee stuff. All right. Well, the coffee stuff led to the, what, okay, I'm going to do OnlyFans. Why wouldn't these kids do OnlyFans? I mean, that's what these college kids are doing, you know, OnlyFans. But remember I told you way in the back, I believe that this was OnlyFans 2.0. It was like on steroids, okay? So you're introduced to the stuff. You're introduced to someone like when they see what you're doing and and how you're doing it and, you know, um, kids are very – easily influenced. That's just how life goes. But here I look at Kaylee's path and, you know, Peyton was in school. Okay. She was going, she was in the sororities. She was going to Moscow. And then all of a sudden, you know, yes, same thing happened. COVID hits in 2020, right? Well, guess what she's posting about? Um, Peyton's posted about how, hey, come and see me at, you know, the, the Dutch Bros. As long as you don't have COVID. She was posting that on March 27th, 2020. Okay. Um, same type of thing that Kaylee was posting. These girls and their very similar pattern of um, travel and coffee shops. And they both went to the university of Idaho. And then all of a sudden they're back at their, they're back at their homes. Kaylee's at her parents' home. This Peyton girls, she's back in her hometown. They're both go back to their hometown. Okay. But yet they're coming back and forth and being in Moscow and going back to their hometown. Okay. They're both doing the same type of thing, not doing it together. All right. 
Um, there's no pictures of them together. They don't hang out together or anything like that. Um, but they have a ton of the same supposedly best friends. Like all these girls are always talking about, that's my best friend. That's my best friend. That's my best friend. Okay. Um, and so Kaylee goes home right before she's supposed to graduate, talks about that she's going to go to, you know, Europe. Then she's going to move. We can't find Kaylee's LinkedIn because it's been deleted. If any of these girls had OnlyFans, they've been deleted. And I say there's no shame in any of that shit because it's there for a reason. People are using it. But the thing that stuck out to me was this whole sugar daddy shit. This whole, you know, hanging out with the older guys, way older. Like the Playboy lifestyle, the Hugh Hefners, the get them to pay for you. Because when I saw that Peyton's page was scamming, screwing people over, scamming, phishing, it wasn't the first time. <clears throat> the activity that was going on in these two houses, it's not just 1122 King Road. 1112 King Road and 1122 King Road. In my opinion, you might as well just fucking call it the same damn house. It's the same type of people. It's the same friends. Okay. You got two six bedroom houses next to each other. That's 12 girls. Revolving doors, parties, hanging all out together, like all doing things together. Okay. All of those girls at that house know all of the business that's going on anywhere. Look at, you want to talk about nosy neighbors? You want to talk about knowing everything? Your kitchen window, I could act like I'm washing my dishes. I'm washing my dishes here. But really, am I? I'm over here just... Right here. Looking out my kitchen window. I'm acting like I'm washing dishes. I'm able to see everything. I know everybody in that neighborhood, they know every single thing. And then I go back to Cindy Barnhart's comment. And I said, why is this woman talking about all this violence needs to stop? Like, what past violence are we talking about? And then I think about, oh, what the hell happened in the summer of 2019? You had people that are about to rent that place out. Then all of a sudden, what? Oh, we need to put it back on the market. Something fucking happened. Oh, look at that. Used to be a glass door. Oh, look at now it's not. I'm telling you, landlords don't want to go fucking replacing anything because they're cheap bastards. So, sorry. No girl is going to call up and be like, oh, my God, you know what? I really don't want this, this door. It's like, got, you know, people can look in here. Uh, put a curtain over it. <clears throat> Everybody in that area, they know everything that's going on. They knew everything that's going on. That's 100. You could take that to the bank. I always wondered who were the people that Dateline, you know, snatched up. Like, who really were these people? So I wanted to do some digging because their names are out there. They were on Dateline. The Maya girl, Happensall, she saved her brother's life at the age of seven. I don't know if you guys know that. She was sledding. And her five-year-old brother, she was seven. He was five. She got like a congressional medal, okay? Um, he falls and goes into some well. And she's running to go get her grandfather. And because they're like, she's like, hey, so-and-so's drowning. So-and-so's drowning. There's a big old write-up about it. 2009, 
She's a hero. In 2009, she saved her brother's life. She was seven, he was five. So, again, I wanted to look up who these girls were. Well, this Maya, Maya is Peyton's roommate. Conklin, they all live together. Where at? At this house right here, right next to the house. Why would you be calling Kaylee all morning and texting her all morning and you couldn't get a hold of her? Why wouldn't you just walk over there then? Why, why were you texting and calling? How about that? Why were you? And you live this close. Why wouldn't you just walk right over there, right? Well, then I looked at it and I was like, wait a second. No, she had graduated. She's in Seattle. Seattle, Lana? Yeah, she's in motherfucking Seattle. Yeah. This girl right here. Eppensall. She's in Seattle, Washington. She's going to... Um, she got her psychology degree. She got her psych degree at the University of Idaho. She's in Seattle. She had graduated. She lived at 1112 King Road for about one to two years. <clears throat> I didn't put the picture up of the girl. So if she wasn't living next door, why was she calling Kaylee and blowing up Kaylee that morning? I'm just curious. When's the last time she called her before that? And there's much, much more. Who notified her in Seattle? Maybe she heard something happen. Yeah, maybe. You mean before the police were called? Hmm, interesting. Interesting. Don't go anywhere, Yulana. <laughs> uh, gonna grab a new drink. Be back. <laughs> I'm just reading chat loves. Uh yeah, a lot of times gone into this, um, a lot of putting the pieces together, um, because remember that whole thing? Um, remember that whole thing? Thank you there, Miss Potts. Remember that whole thing of, is the house the target? Who's the target? Is somebody the target? Um... Well, you know, call me old school, but if somebody was to be, let's really talk about this because I think this is important. All these girls look alike. There's so many girls that look alike, right? So if you're, if you're stalking them, okay, or you're doing a favor for somebody, let's say, um, and someone's like, here, 
these are these girls or these are these boys go, you know, whatever, go find out where they live. Um, you would be like, give me, you know, give me a picture. Well, these girls go from being, you know, blonde to being brown to being black haired to being, you know, um, all dressing alike, all acting the same. And then you go and you want to look at the white pages or, you know, where these people supposedly live. And you're like, well, all these people are saying that they still live in these houses because they didn't um, get out of these leases. Meanwhile, they're subletting it to people. Okay. Um, so think about that. You think that all these people live in this house, but then come to find out these people have been subletting. And so they're not the people, but they look like the people. Um, how would you know? How would I be able to tell the difference? I mean, look at these photos. You got to like, you know, click on them or highlight them to like see, you know, I mean, look at, look at what's going on. What, for example, look at Bethany and look at the, the Hunter's girlfriend. What's her name? Emily, right? Bethany and Emily look like they're the same damn person. <clears throat> um, this girl, Peyton, she got out of Dodge. She lived there for three or four years. She didn't graduate. Um, she says that she was jealous of people. You know, she didn't really have her thing. She wanted to find her thing. So she goes and starts doing this bodybuilding. Um, she didn't post, or if she did, it was deleted between 6 20, 2020 and 12 21, 2020. For five months, she didn't post on Instagram. Wait, Lana, would that be after the whole summer thing that you're talking about? Yes, it would be. So Peyton didn't post on Instagram from 6 20, 2020 until 12 21, 2020. Well, shit, did she do like five months in jail or something? I don't fucking know. She just didn't post on Instagram. Between 6-20 and 12-21 of 2020. The 12-21 post, 2020, um, that was right there by the holidays. Then the next time she posts after 12-21, 2020, was 5-13-2021. Her sugar daddy, sugar baby post, was on 6-17-2021. That's right when Maddie moved in with Ruby Simpson and all them in that house. The seeking arrangements with the, and the Dutch bros and stuff like that. Um, the seeking arrangements was 216 2020. She said she worked at an eye doctor. She had her job eight to five, nine to five. Um, and she just gave that up. She wasn't qualified. She can't believe that she even had the job. And I was listening and she was like the eye doctor's assistant. And she's like, I had no, like, I don't even curious who that eye doctor is. <laughs> um, You can see everything from that window. Yes, you can. You sure can. Um, you can see everything. Sleeper agent, welcome to Truth and Transparency. Again, welcome to everybody. 
I'm going to, you know, close this out, give you guys a lot to, to consider here, an hour and 10 minutes worth of, I mean, bringing it all full circle here. Um, what was the lifestyle like? Who, um, what's the victimology? Who these girls interact with? What were they doing? Uh, were they in competition with each other? Who can get the better sugar daddy? I don't know. Um, all I know is that Maddie liked every single TikTok, every single Instagram post that Peyton put up there. And then I will end with this which was what Peyton wrote on her, Peyton didn't post from 11, 11, 20, 22, until 11, 21. She went 10 days and didn't post on Instagram. And this is after she became a very big influencer. Um, she's never done that. She made part of her, she reps a bunch of brands. Um, she did a thing called Heaven Can Wait Heaven, uh, I'll show it here. But she said some very, very interesting stuff um, in this post. And it says that, let's see. It says, life is so short. We've all heard that phrase a thousand times, but what does it really mean? Us human beings like to think that we are invincible, that tomorrow is promised and our lives will play out exactly the way we envision. For the vast majority, however, this is not the case. Recently, horror struck close to my, I'm sorry, horror struck close to home in my college town of Moscow, Idaho. Watching my friends grieve through this and feel this unspeakable loss is so incredibly difficult. Watching my friends, not her, not her grieve, but watching my friends grieve through this and feel this unspeakable loss is so incredibly difficult. Heaven has to wait in quotes means so much more to me than just fabric. It means living each day with intention knowing that it could be your last. It means calling your mom, your sister, your best friend, just to say, I love you. It means never taking one opportunity for granted because you're not done here on earth. Not yet. It's going to go fast. No replays or rewinds. So make it count. In quotes, heaven has to wait. 11-24-2022 she releases a new like brand from her clothing line. Um, but I thought it was interesting because I would be under the impression that Maddie was, you know, you know, that these girls were her friends. Again, thank you. Um, sleeper agent. Uber. Welcome to, to the Transparency Home Team. Come crying with me. Welcome. Kathleen, welcome. Doctor. But after the 0% frat intro, I'm feeling like a frat rat. I've lost my appetite. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Thank you guys so much. Rewind it, play it back. A lot of information was given here. I don't want the information to, to be um, lost. So this is where it will end with this um, information. And um, you are welcome for making you use your brains. Um, there was a lifestyle being lived by by the sororities, by the fraternities, by these girls and their friends. It was a lifestyle. Peyton got out of it 
and went and straight and got herself into literally working out all the time. I would love to know more about Peyton's story. Maybe she can come on and and talk about it. Maybe she's going to, maybe she's not. But I promise you guys this, that that house, those people, these friends, this group, they know exactly what kind of lifestyles they were all living. And this is what Dave was talking about. If you know something, say something. If something doesn't seem right. But who were, not just these girls, who were anybody in that area, in this group, and living this, this lifestyle, coming in contact with? Remember, Olivia, Kaylee's sister, said, no, nobody's, nobody's been arrested for this. Nobody's safe. Why do you think all of them left? Why do you think that whole house left? That whole house, 1112, they got the fuck out of there. Why? Why? All of them. All of these people. And what was Olivia's sister? What was she saying? Kaylee's sister, get out of there. Leave. None of you guys are safe. There's nobody been arrested for this. Until next time, guys, make some, make uh, make yourself known. Uh, share the video. Thumbs it up. Thumbs it down. Um, you have an opinion. Use the comment section of the of the video. Use your thumb. Use your touch DNA again. To the transparency, home team appreciates you. Members, thank you. New and old moderators couldn't do it without you. You guys keep um, the environment just the way I like it. Thank you so much. Um, again, I appreciate all your guys' emails. I try to get to them. I do look at them. Um, again, thank you. Um, and I know sometimes when the live is going so quickly, people can get blocked at times. Um, I am looking at the block list to see if, you know, we can go ahead and restore some of you guys. So please be patient. Um, again, thank you so much. And uh, we will see you all on the flip side. Tomorrow night, myself and Bella have a very special guest. Don't miss that show. Talk to you then. Again, run it back. Watch it a couple different times. Get the information. It's accurate. Nothing but the facts. Nothing but the motherfucking facts. Nothing but the hits. Wouldn't you get out of there too? Oh, hell yeah, I'd get out of there too, especially if I was in the know. If I was in the know, yeah, because I'd get the fuck out of there too. Absolutely. Again, take care, guys. Deuces. Compete my time slot. Silly, silly. I don't even know that answer. I don't even know that answer.